Hey there, welcome back to another episode of the Start Here Web Development Podcast. Thanks for joining me. Dane here. Today we've got a big Q&A episode. I've got a bunch of questions on freelancing, a bunch of questions on your career, on the advanced beginner concept. Um, also have questions on front-end development and a bunch of other ones. So hang in there. We're going to go through all of these. But before we do that, I just wanted to announce to everybody that we have a new email course that I think a lot of you might be interested in or might help and add value to a lot of you. So it's the advancedbeginnerchallenge.com. If you just go to the advancedbeginnerchallenge.com, I have an audio clip there of me telling you exactly what it is. I, I sort of lay it out step by step and identify how it's going to add value to you and exactly what you get for the course. It is a paid program, so don't go there if you're not interested in paying. It's only $29, though. The reason for that is you have to have some skin in the game in order to really t uh, utilize something I've found in my life. Anything I've gotten for free, especially training, I never implement it as well as something where it's just a little bit of money. you know. And then also, I've seen a lot of these courses, they're charging $299 for like a CSS course. And to me, I don't know, it seems a little bit unnecessary to charge that much. So for me, you know, this this price point just seems right. So if you if you're interested in growing your career from a junior to a mid level, or you're interested in getting your first job in web development, this course is specifically for you. So if you go on the website, you can actually choose which course you want to go in the Ruby Python or JavaScript track. Um, it's an email course delivered to you every day. Again, I'm not going to sell it too much here. There's an audio clip on the website you can check out for more about that. And one last note on that is we are currently adding, not it's not there yet, but we will be soon adding new languages. So we're adding PHP next, and then after that we're doing Elixir. So specifically, you learn a language and a framework. So it's Rails, Ruby, Python, Django, JavaScript, React, and Vue.js that you learn currently. In the future, we're going to offer PHP and Laravel. And then after that, we're going to offer Elixir and Phoenix. And then after that, I'm thinking in the functional world, something like Clojure, some, some kind of Lisp language would be fun too. So go ahead and head on over to that website if you're interested in that type of thing. If you don't have a job right now, I'm honestly telling you, you need to be going to this website because if you do not have a job in web development and you're listening to this podcast, which I know is a lot of you, I know some of you still listen even after you have a job, that's awesome, but I know a lot of you don't have a job right now, this is the thing for you. There's daily emails, I have daily audio uh, like podcasts I'm dropping in there private to you guys where we're talking about mindset, how to get your job faster than you ever imagined, trust me, like... It's all about your mindset, really a lot, pretty much all the coaching students that I work with, the t at the time at which they approach me, they have enough knowledge to get a junior position. Some of them want to come in at a higher level, like a, a mid-level position, that's why they might want to work with me, but a lot of people are confused, like a lot of you guys have the skills presently to do this type of stuff and to get these positions you're just not seizing and sort of dominating these opportunities when you see them. And some of you are, and you're still being turned down, and I think that's a, that's a separate issue. But a lot of the people that I work with, they just, they just aren't sort of um, aggressive enough. So this is the thing for you. Trust me, this is the thing for you. I'm hyper aggressive, and you're going to get a taste of what it's like to work with me as a one-on-one -on -one coaching student through these daily emails and this daily uh, communication. Also, if you join now, I'll drop you my WhatsApp so you can communicate with me privately in a one-on-one -on -one fashion. Uh, again, I only do that for my coaching students, but you get that for, uh, you know, I'm doing that for like another week. So that, that bonus is going to be ending because I can't communicate with everybody. But for the first couple hundred people, you know, I'm happy to do that too, for you. And, and I can really help you in a much more personal way. You know, we're, we're going to basically what I've been communicating already with the people that have joined my WhatsApp is we're, I basically ask them where they are in their career, what their goals are, and why they haven't achieved those goals, and what languages they've learned and how long they spent learning. And then I basically just give them a plan, you know, on exactly how to get to their goal. And it's been, it's been great. People have been loving it. 
And that's just like if you were to work with me as a, as a coaching student, but that program costs $3,000 on average. So this is great value I want to give to you guys. And it's all about how can I help as many people as possible? That's why I'm doing this because the one-on-one -on -one coaching has been so impactful for these 11 students that now I'm just like, how can I scale that? How can I make that more impactful? So this group, you know, getting everybody on my WhatsApp, I, I really think that's going to be so helpful. So head on over advancedbeginnerchallenge.com. Give it a listen, give it a read, fill it out, enter your information, and I will be in touch with you with the WhatsApp and the bonus. And the course starts usually anywhere from three seconds to 15 minutes after you hit submit. So go ahead and enter all, all your information there, hit submit, and day one will start immediately. Cool. Now on to the episode. In today's episode, we're going to talk about a number of questions that are focused around freelancing, advanced beginner, career, and front end. And I'm just going to, the way this is going to work is I'm going to kind of read the question and I'm going to try to read it exactly like they phrased it so that I know that as a listener on the other side, I love when they do that because it makes me feel like I can connect more with the, with the person asking the question. So I want to do that here as well. Okay. First question. Do I develop on my own host and somehow move it to the client's host, or do I get the client to buy hosting first, then develop there? Any help or advice would be awesome. Thanks so much for this question. So here's my recommended formula. I've been freelancing for eight years. Here's my exact um, thing that you should do, okay? This is exactly what you should do. The only scenario where you shouldn't do this is if you want to make money off of hosting clients' websites. But, huge but, beware, because I've known multiple freelancers that have done that, and it's always a nightmare. It's always a nightmare, okay? The thing about freelancing is you want to have as clean of a split and breakaway, as clean of a breakaway as possible, right? Now, how do you do that? you you engineer the relationship such that nothing is hosted on your stuff none of the keys are in your pocket right all of that stuff is in the client's pocket and you're just sort of using it to get their thing up because as a freelancer you have to keep moving dude as a freelancer your life is momentum you get paid for the hours right so therefore any amount of time that you're spending uh with a client's website is diminishing it's diminishing returns basically because the the amount of trust me as a freelancer the most you're going to charge is either at the beginning or the very end of the project so there's never a scenario where an ongoing client relationship at for a normal web developer increases in revenue for the business it's usually just like diminishing returns and it's you're spending more and more time helping them with shit and it, all that is a waste okay you i take this one step further i don't just put hosting on their website i actually have a section in my contract that states that i will train them okay i will train them on the system and this is why i do a lot of i've done in the past i don't anymore i've done a lot of i actually stopped freelancing that's what i meant but um i've done a ton of wordpress stuff okay I've gone through the full cycle of loving WordPress, becoming a senior developer or mid-level developer, hating WordPress because it's too easy and all this type of stuff, then coming back full circle. Now I love it because I can just give it to somebody and I, I they never have to call me again. They can find somebody else, right? As a freelancer, your time is the most valuable thing that you have, okay? You really need to be spending a lot of time clearing time. Right? It's like you have to be spending a lot of time making sure that you're moving forward aggressively and dealing with client stuff, having shit hosted on your server that this is all admin work that you need to figure out how to extricate yourself from. Put it all on their server. Think before a project takes place. Think, okay? How can I have as clean a breakaway as possible? If it's a super extremely complicated custom development project, I actually have developers ready to come in, okay? I take this to such an extreme. I stopped freelancing just recently. Last project was huge, a 
okay? The, the way I structured it was there was a maintenance team that cycled in right when I cycled out. And that was because of me. I'm not going to sit there and do ongoing maintenance. Screw that, right? Engineer the relationships. Enge guess what? You own the contract, okay? <laughs> you, it's your contract. They can sign it or not. Engineer it in such a way that you like your life, okay? <laughs> this is the this is the um the handcuffs, the invisible handcuffs. When you have something that you don't realize you can change, that is actually in your 100% full control. They call this learned helplessness, okay? I know that's not what you're exhibiting here with I'm kind of really going out on a limb associating your question to learned helplessness, but more people than you would think are experiencing learned helplessness right now, okay? So focus on how can I engineer this contract that I own that they can sign or not such that I like my life, okay? Extricating myself after the relationship, moving on to make more money in more clients and future clients, that's going to make you happier. So, and, and obviously there could be extenuating circumstances like this could be your mother's website or something, right? There could be circumstances in which my advice doesn't apply, but this is basically what I do. And this is how, this is how I think about this topic. Um, anyway, I hope this was helpful. A little bit of freelancing, um, info just wanted to drop in here. Cause I know a lot of you out there are aspiring to be, or currently are freelancing, which is awesome. It's a great vehicle. I like it because I used to love it because it was a way to control your own destiny, right? Freelancing. It's like freelancing with any skill. You know, if you're a freelance um, welder or a freelance programmer, same thing. You control your destiny, right? And the reason you control your destiny, most people would think you're at the control of other people as a freelancer, right? You probably think that. I'm sure you have thought that, or if not, you, one of your friends thinks that. If you're freelancing, you're at the control of the leads, right? Like the inbound. You're at the whim of the people, the, the demand. You're at the whim of the demand. Um, that's actually not true. You're at the whim of your sales ability, okay? You're at the whim of your lead generation skills. You're at the whim of your funnel optimization patterns. You're at the whim of your daily habits. You're at the whim of yourself, okay? In a job, it's completely different. It is, you're in their control. Freelancing, you're totally in control. But it only works if you actually believe that, okay? I know tons of freelancers that fail and hate their life or don't fail, like they make a good living, but they hate their life. And um, a lot of it is because of this client extrication failure that I'm talking about here. A lot of them don't extricate themselves enough from the previous clients they work on. And that there's some psychological things here too. David Allen talks about this, how he thinks that in the future there's going to be a lot of neuroscience on how you shouldn't keep things on open loops running in your head. Um, so this is this this applies to your business. You know how can you stop thinking about old clients? You don't want that to run for too long. Trust me. As a business owner, you don't want that to think. You know you don't want to think like that. You want to be thinking 90% ahead, 10% about the past, okay? You do want to be thinking about the past a little bit, but you really have to focus forward, focus forward. So I know this is tough. This is hard. Freelancing is super challenging. Hardest thing I've probably ever done in my career is freelancing because the bigger the project, the harder it is exponentially than a team because you're doing everything. You're the entire business, and that has been like the funnest but most challenging thing in my career um, so far. And that's why I stopped it because I was like, okay, I've pretty much done and seen what I want to out of that area of, of business, right? There's different areas of business. So I think all of you that have never freelanced, the reason I say that isn't to brag, it's to tell you all of you that haven't freelanced, give it a chance, give it a chance with the correct mindset you know, with the correct actions, with the correct sales skills that you learn, okay? Nobody is born with this shit. Read sales books. Watch YouTube videos of sales experts, sales leaders. Like, 
you, and guess what? If you're a freelancer, you better be watching YouTube videos of accounting, of business development, of sales, of marketing, of development. Like you better be that rabid in your knowledge acquisition strategies um, or you're going to fail. Okay. It's that it's a very competitive, hyper difficult business and you have to be hyper aware of the challenges and hyper aggressive in sort of stopping them or mitigating any sort of negative downside that can come from them. Okay. It's very important. Anyway, stop. I'll stop there on freelancing. I could talk about freelancing all day. I love freelancing or I loved it, especially when I was doing it. Um, any other questions you guys have? I, again, I know a lot of you are freelancing. Um, it's probably like 40% of my audience. So please write me miller.dain at gmail.com or on Twitter at D-A-I-N Miller. Ask me questions on your freelancing business. What figures are you at? Email me if you want it to stay private. What figures are you at now? What figures do you want to be at? How can we get you there? I want to help you with that. Cool. Next question. Here we go. You said it's much better to learn a framework than a language. So lately I've been messing around with AngularJS. Do you think this is a good idea? I have a basic understanding of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript because of the Khan Academy tutorials. I would like to find a job using these skills, but I know they aren't polished enough. The actual question is, if I spent three to five hours a day learning Angular, how long do you think before I can find a front-end job? Thanks for this question. So here's the thing. Um, <laughs> you already know enough, and this goes back to the same thing that I, that I just was talking about in the past question. You could currently get a junior front-end position, okay, a very junior position. Maybe you want to be a mid-level. I don't know. I'm not going to try to interpret this email in that way because then I'll answer the question wrong. But I'll, I'll just say this, okay. The answer to get a job, and this is what I do with all my coaching students, is not necessarily to spend three to five hours a day learning Angular, okay? You can spend like one hour a day. That's way plenty. What you really need to be spending three to five hours a day on is making yourself appear like you're already a front-end developer, okay? How do you get a job for anything? How do you raise your, the game? You, you basically take it on before the reality of it is given to you. And to be hired by a hiring manager, you have to be appealable. You have to, be, you have to appeal to them. So all my coaching students, we set up a website. If you go to my YouTube and Google, or if you go to my YouTube, the latest video, how to, how to set up a portfolio, in that video, I give a formula and also it's the podcast episode just before this. In that episode, I give a formula that I require every single student I work with to set up before we go out and blast any job applications. So there's two messages I want to get across to you in this answer. The first is you have to follow the formula I've laid out. You have to have a website with blog posts about front end. You have to have an about page with a picture of your goddamn self. You have to have a projects page with like deployed front-end things that, guess what? You can get those from just following tutorials. You don't need three to five hours a day to do that. Then you need a contacts page. Then you need like a little bit of a Twitter presence so you're not like an anomaly. So hiring managers can be like, oh, I actually know who this person is. I can see his personality online. You need all the basics, okay? You need the packaging. You need the packaging. You're never, nobody's going to get a job if they just learn Angular for three to five hours. What does that even mean? It doesn't even mean anything. What you really have to focus on is the packaging. That's the first thing I want to get across to you in this reply. The second thing that you really have to do in order to get a job is realize that it's a numbers game. So all of the students that I work with, we position their online presence, their everything, so specifically. And it still takes them 50 applications 20 interviews sometimes, right? Some, some of these people, I'm trying to get them a higher level job. But 
it, it it wouldn't take that long if it was just junior positions, okay? But the point is, it's a numbers game, even if you do it perfectly, using all the best psychology. I prep these people to go into interviews with the most cutting-edge psychology, right? It still takes 10 interviews, 20, you know, one person did it in five, but that's the lowest. So my question to you, or my, my action item for you, I need you to set up that portfolio, aka your online website. You have blog posts where you're talking about front end. You have a picture. You have you go. You don't build this yourself. Stop building websites yourself that you're going to show hiring managers. You are never going to make it look good enough. Go in the in that watch that video or listen to the the podcast episode before this. I give a formula. Go to Theme Forest. Spend thirty five bucks. Make sure you buy a responsive, clean theme. It's not that hard. Use WordPress. Set all this shit up easy peasy. Get it, follow a couple tutorials, build and deploy them, put them on your projects page. Then blast out the number two thing in this answer, blast out 50 applications. Personalized. Personalized. You're, you're a sniper, but you're also shotgun. So you're blasting out personalized. This takes a long time, probably three days. Just pure eight hours blasting personal uh, applications. You'll get 20 phone screens. Get good at communication skills. If your communication skills are poor, you will never get a job. Ever. It would be an anomaly. And uh, that's not actually true. Plenty of people have jobs with poor communication skills. I'm just telling you guys that so that you're better than everybody else. So 20 phone screens, 10 interviews, you'll get a job. So follow that formula, you'll get a job. Problem is, when do you start that? When do you when do you transition from I have my website set up and everything to then okay, I think I know enough. I'm going to start blasting out emails or or those personalized job applications. How do you know when you're ready for that? The answer is you start doing that way before you think you're ready. Nobody thinks they're ready for anything that is good. Trust me. Nobody at the high level even thinks they're ready for what they currently have. Okay? I need you to blast out these applications far earlier than you think is appropriate. The And here's, not from me, from the founder of LinkedIn, Reid Hoffman, known in, the Silicon Val- known in Silicon Valley as the Oracle um, because of his investments. So, he says, if you're not a little bit embarrassed by your first version, then you waited too long to launch. If you're not a little bit embarrassed, okay, same is true for you. You are, in this case, the first version. You're the first version of yourself that you're showing to hiring managers. You're the first version of yourself in this new job uh, or in this new industry that you're, you're showing on the phone, to sell, to sell yourself. You're the first version of yourself going to these interviews. Start soon. It's a numbers game. You're going to go through a lot of them. By the 20th phone call, you're going to be like the 10th version of yourself. You're going to be a badass. Some people it's <laughs> some people don't know how to learn from their mistakes and they do need personalized training. In that case, watch YouTube videos, you know. A lot of this stuff you have to be proactive. You know, watch YouTube videos, visualize, practice, learn more about communication, how to, how to sell yourself, how do you talk effectively with no muttering, like how do you communicate so over the phone so that they want to invite you into, into the meeting, into the next meeting? You know, how can you be standout? Like on the phone, you can be like, oh, you know, I had this idea for your website if it's a designer, you know, I was thinking we could do this and it would improve the UX of this, you know, so how can you be standout? Always be thinking that way. Always be thinking that way. How can you be standout? Then after you've blasted out all these applications and you follow this formula, the sort of trick is, or the key, um, (laughs) and this is funny, right? If you just blasted out 50 applications and then you stopped, um, you basically would get like two or three phone calls but that's not that great, right? So what we do is we do follow-ups. Um, 
And I, I, I guess I don't really have a video where I talk about this application strategy. So maybe I should record a podcast episode on this. If you want that, let me know. So what, just to give you an insight though, what we do is in, in the sales world, they call it the fortunes in the follow-up. Okay. The fortune is in the second phone call, the fifth phone call, the 10th phone call. That's where the fortune is. It's not in the first phone call. So we follow up second email. Hey, did you get our application? My application just wanted to check in, see if we were a good fit. Third email, fourth email, fifth email. Stop, we stop at five, or actually, I think we stop at uh, three now. I think we just changed it to three. So, but yeah, we stop at three, but they're spaced apart. A week, um, some it depends. Sometimes a couple days, sometimes a week. Just depends on the the how big the company is because that. Uh, shows you how busy the hiring manager is typically. Um, so anyway, these are some strategies that I think you can use. I kind of did a sh uh, shotgun approach where I just gave you a bunch of different strategies, but f you know, go back, listen to the episode before this, really understand this concept. Watch my YouTube video on the advanced beginner. In that, I talk about how to deploy tutorials or also you can watch the video how to build a web app without knowing anything. In that video, I also talk about that. Um, you could put those on your projects page and yeah, any other advice that I could give you, I'm happy to feel free to email me and I will do an episode on, um, the latter stages of getting the job. So how do you blast out the applications personally? Um, how do you follow up on the applications? And then, uh, we do have episodes on the, on the actual interview. So if you're interested in the interview, there's a technical interview, episode with Josh Duty. Just search start here, Josh Duty. Um, great episode. So if you really, uh, if you give that a listen, I think it'll help you out a lot. So, but thanks for this question. All right, next question. Hey, Dane, been listening to your podcast and YouTube videos, very encouraging, advanced beginner, et cetera, et cetera. I've wrote down some tutorials on my to-do list like jQuery, W3 schools, et cetera, but they are too high level. Can you give me some ideas on what kind of tutorials I need to start reading? By the way, I'm following the JavaScript course on Udemy at the moment, and it's really good. Lots of eye openers. Thanks for your time. So thanks for this question. I appreciate it. So what I'll say is the best way that I know to really think about this. You're, so this person is talking about the reading in my Advanced Beginner Challenge. I say you should read 10 tutorials, then do 25. And I just say read 10, right? Because, and then I give this whole explanation. I'm not going to get into that here because it would take forever. But the reason you're reading is because you want to gather context, right? So the fact that these tutorials are too advanced for you, they're too high level, that's perfect, Lino. That's actually perfect for you. You want to be reading things that are above your level because it gives you context and injects those terms, those definitions into your brain. There's no better way that I know of that to inject terms into your brain than to be reading tutorials that are above your level. So trust me, that's a totally acceptable thing. If you think it's too high level because you don't understand any of it, that's the whole point. That's why it's called counterintuitive advice. If I just gave you advice that everybody else gives you, it's going to give you the same results that everybody else is getting, which is not, I'm based on what I'm looking at, not exactly the best advice. So here... We're saying read tutorials that are above your level, and this can apply at any phase of your life or your career. So if you're just starting out, read junior tutorials because they're going to be above your level. If you're mid-level and you want to go senior, read very advanced tutorials that you don't even understand. You can't even figure out what the hell they're talking about. Read that type of stuff over and over, and eventually it's going to help you quite a lot. And it's really counterintuitive. A lot of the students that we work with, they don't quite understand it until they start doing tutorials later and they're like, wait a minute, I read about that like 10 times. Model, view, view controller, model. Like these are junior people, so it's maybe different when you're at a high level trying to do this, but they're like, oh, I, I read about that over and over again and I saw that they had to set it up. And I, I, don't, I didn't know what set it up meant, but now I see, I know what it, it, it just clicks. Everything starts to click. And the whole thing that I want to do with my teaching style is I want people to feel little clicks every time they sit down to learn. Because if I can make somebody have a dopamine response to learning, 
I can basically turn them into a hyper successful person with very, very little effort because what we're doing is we're rewiring your brain. So, and this is, there's, this is psychology or um, this is biology, not even psychology, dopamine release. So for you, how do you get a dopamine release when you sit down to program or to do tutorials? Very difficult to do. Um, usually cause, causes cortisol to be released because it's stressful. It's a lot of work. So what you can do is the advanced beginner challenge. Sign up for my course. Literally, we read tutorials, and then when you sit down every day to do them, you're like, oh, wow, I read about that. Click, little dopamine, little innovation in your brain. Your brain thinks that it, there's an innovation that happened. Boom, dopamine. Next time you sit down, boom, dopamine. Eventually, over the course of, of weeks and potentially months, that transforms a lot of the way that, ways that you think about learning. You know, you can't wait to get back to it. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger talks about this. His dad used to make him do push-ups before he was allowed to eat breakfast as a child. He had to do push-ups before he was allowed to eat breakfast. And then later in the book, Total Recall, he says when he gets the pump, it feels better than an orgasm. Do you know why? The secret behind Arnold Schwarzenegger wasn't Arnold. It was his father. Because his father rewired Arnold's brain to see workout as a good thing because it produced dopamine because the reward the reward bias is one of the strongest things that we have in humans incentive cause bias incentives and economics are one of the most powerful economics is just the study of human in, interaction with incentives so it's all about incentives if you can rewire your brain like that, like Arnold's father did to Arnold, you're going to be as successful in your field as Arnold was as a bodybuilder, okay? It all is about rewiring your brain and how early you start doing that. So start now. I'm giving you a counterintuitive way to do it. I'm giving you a counterintuitive way to do it. There's tons of other ways, right? For instance, every time you sit down, like nobody taught me this when I was coming up. So what I did that was my own way of creating massive dopamine for me is I'm like a really action person. So I'm a momentum person in the pace system. And so what for me, what I did was every time I sat down, I deployed the app. Like I, wh wh whatever tutorial, tutorial I did, I made sure that there was like walks me through how to de deploy it on Heroku. And I didn't do tutorials that didn't teach me that. And that was because I wanted to have deployed the thing that I created by the time I was done with the session, with the coding session. And, and that worked for me. That's not for everybody. That's just, that worked for me because I love momentum so much. When I saw that, it was like, boom, huge dopamine release, right? Huge serotonin release from the achievement. And so that's not going to work for everybody. And nobody was around to teach me this advanced beginner hack. The hack I'm giving you is much quicker and much less difficult than deploying a tutorial every time you sit down with the code. It can be quite daunting. <laughs> and in fact, I used that hack for years in different areas. Like my first big, big freelance client, um, it was so scary that I didn't want to sit down and code because it was so scary. So what I did was I made it so I could deploy the site and have him view it every single minute that he wanted to. And we set it up such that he could actually deploy at any moment what's on master. And so it was super fun. I turned it from something scary to something super fun because anyway, that's a little bit more advanced about what um, there's a topic in there of like how visibility on the project at any given time allows the client to feel free and less fearful in their Therefore, you're less stressed about this magical end result that you have to deliver. That's a, that's a different topic. But in this perspective, I used it, or from this perspective that we're talking about now, I used that project um, as a way to, to do this to my brain. Because I was like, okay, how can I have it so every time I sit down, I'm cool, I'm stoked. And that was... I want to deploy this sucker every time I sit down. Boom, deploy, 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 get the client looking at it, seeing it, see what's going on. And then it turned it from this like scary thing that I was procrastinating on to something I was like, okay, we're rolling, you know, we're moving, let's go. 
And a lot of the times for me, again, because I'm a momentum slash action person, for me, if I can re- re-engineer life to like always be moving, even if it's little bit by little bit by little bit, like, trust me, for me, it's like the golden ticket of motivation. It's like the you hit the fountain, the, the water is just spraying. Like, it is the most intense form of motivation for me. And I want you guys to, the reason I say that is because I want you guys to find that type of motivation for you, Okay. And so the Advanced Beginner Challenge is just a hack. It's a, it's a sort of my solution on how to get some of that dopamine release every time you sit down to code. But that being said, I do want you to find the thing that motivates you the most so that every time you start a big project that's scary, you're able to turn it into something that's fun for you. You know, you could love the idea of like completing a super complicated project. So every time you sit down, you just think about it and how fun that that end result would be. Like everybody's different, right? Everybody isn't going to be like me in the way I did it. Some of you are going to be complete opposites, I'm sure. So whatever it is, always be studying your motivations. Always be studying yourself. The best way my mentor ever told me to find what motivates me the most and this is kind of the funniest thing that I is so obvious that nobody ever told me. It's like <laughs> I went through 12 years of school and I feel like at some point in the first 12 years I was in school, they should have told me this. Look at other people that you're jealous of. Okay. Look at other people that you're jealous of. What about them makes you jealous? Is it their status? Is it their actions? Is it their looks? Is it their partner? Is it their romance, their love, their family? Is it their possessions? Is it their experiences? What about them makes you the most jealous? Because guess what? That's what motivates you the most 90% of the time. This is what my mentor told me. And I was like, that's bullshit. That can't be true. You know, like all hard-headed people, this guy is super successful and I'm just like everybody. So I'm super hard-headed. And so I was like, Psh. of course I was nice to him in the moment. But in my head, I was like, that can't be like the how it can't be that easy because motivation is hard. That's probably the number one thing most people struggle with is motivation. So I was like, there's no way. But then I did it. You know, I did it on all these people. Really, you have to sit down and really put it, an hour to it and think about it. You know, who am I, am I jealous of? Why? Okay, well, it's because of that. And then I think about it more. And I'm like, what's behind that? What is the reason behind that? And eventually, you realize you're jealous of them. And then you think you, you find the key thing that makes you jealous of them. And then you're like, wait a minute. I could turn that knife around on my own back and use it to propel myself forward, okay? And that's like the most powerful thing ever. Most people impale themselves with the knife of jealousy from other people leading to scarcity in their mindset. But me, because of what my mentor told me, I'm able to look at what makes me jealous of other people and turn it into abundance mindset turn the fear of not having that like a knife against my back to push me forward. And I never will get impaled because I'm accelerating forward away from the knife. That's pushing me, the fear of not having that. Most people live in a completely different place. So this is what I want you guys to be able, and I'm not saying this because I'm so cool or whatever. I'm saying it just because I want you guys to have this understanding of how to take problems and break them down and to really understand the mindsets and the the solutions to these problems that you have. You know, writing into my podcast is great, but I would love you to be able to solve the problem on your own. Thinking about things like what motivates me? You know, how can I do this? What are what are the potential failures? What are the potential ways that this could blow up? You know, there's, there's all these different ways that we can be thinking about things. And I find people are very lazy with the ways that they think, the innovations, the, the angles, because they don't have enough knowledge. You, a lot of you guys don't read enough books, man. You have to come at problems from many angles, okay? I've never had to write into a podcast the same questions you guys are writing into me. And I've been 
in the, if you looked at the first two years of my career, I was more successful than 90% of people and I never wrote into a podcast asking how to do it. How is that possible? It's because I read a fucking shitload of books and I had thousands of ways to think about any problem I had. And I was smart enough to have a real life in-person mentor, which I guess that's kind of the same thing as writing into the podcast. So I guess I'm cheating in that way. And I guess I kind of did. Um, but the books were, were way more impactful than that. I had like an hour a month with this guy, right? That's not that much. Um, but the books, re- having n- diverse amounts of knowledge, really, trust me, it gives you different ways to look at problems. And when you're able to look at problems from many different angles, you don't have to ask questions anymore. You can just say, okay, 50 ways to solve this problem, boom, experiment one, pull it off, start today, end a week from now, boom, experiment two, pull it off, start today, start a week from now, end two weeks from now, experiment three, experiment four, like, trust me, when you're able to see things from all these different angles, the experiments in your life will multiply. When the experiments multiply, your successes multiply. When your successes multiply, all the other stuff that you want multiplies. Freedom, happiness, fulfillment, family, relationships, thriving, you know, whatever, whatever you want. It all comes on the other side of all that. Trust me, it all starts with being able to look at problems from many different angles. This is a weird revelation that I've had in the last couple of weeks where I've realized so much of what I'm talking about all the time can be boiled down into this concept of simply having enough knowledge to look at problems in, ang- in different angles. Like it sounds overly simple and it is, but like Einstein said, keep things simple as they are, but no simpler than they should be. And the reason he said that is because he always looked for, if you read his bio- biography or E equals MC square, which is a great book, he always talks about how he would look for the simplicity and the complexity. Okay. This is how he was able to create a, a work of art like E equals MC squared because he was so intelligent that he was able to hold counterintuitive ideas in his head at the same time and distill the simplicity from all the complexity. And that's ultimately the type of thing that, that you really want to be looking for throughout your life, distilling all of, like the world is so complicated. You want to be looking at all this complication and seeing how can I distill it? How can I distill it? Like an example is the questions that I'm getting on this podcast. You know, I'm getting all these questions from people, but the answers are often in a distilled form, a simple form, okay? So if you ask me a question about how to ex- like how to double your income as a freelancer, I'm at this much per month, I want to make blah. How can you like simplify that? What is a simple solution? And I'm I'm not going to walk through that right now, but my point is always be thinking when you're when you have these problems or questions like how do I get my job next week? What is the simple answer for that like what is what is it really what is the gist of what I'm asking what is the gist of how to get your job okay well I have to have applied for a lot of jobs what is the gist of that well I have to look like somebody who can apply for a lot okay what is the gist of that you know a lot of answers to life's most complicated questions can only be found after finding the simplicity in that complexity do you understand this is why it's so important for me to elaborate endlessly on this topic. I, I'm going like on for a long time on this. I'm aware. The reason is because it's the most important thing ever. Okay? It's the most important thing ever to distill the simplicity from all the world's complexity. Guess what? Next 20 years, is it going to be more complex or less complex? It's going to be a tw- hundred times, com- maybe infinitely more complex actually. You know, there's debating theories on how fast complexity rises in the modern world, but you know, let's just say it's going to be 20 times more complicated in 20 years. So in 20 years, in order to answer a question like, how do I get my job? It's going to be 20 times more complicated, okay, based on that math. So therefore, how are you going to be able to answer any questions in the future if you can't answer them now? You know, if you lived in the 1980s, it was much simpler. It was much simpler. But if you couldn't answer questions then, you certainly can't be answering questions now. Okay? So this is a 
sort of a different type of mindset perhaps for, for some of you. For some of you, it's not. But I want you guys to really think about all the diverse sources of knowledge that you're gathering from. What books am I reading? What courses am I taking? What interviews am I watching? What YouTube videos am I watching? The surface area of information better be vast, okay? If you message me asking me a question about why your career isn't where you want it to be and your surface area of knowledge is not vast, then I just found the number one reason. Because again, the, sim the simple answer that I've distilled from all of this complexity is that you need multiple angles to look at any problem. How do you get multiple angles? You can't invent them in your brain. Your brain can invent it invent shit out of nowhere. It probably could because it's a supercomputer, but realistically for most people, it's not going to do that. So you need data. You know, one of my friends told me one time he was, he did, he's a data scientist. He says, I think this is word for word. He says, I think most people just don't have enough raw data in their brain. Cause we were talking about, I don't know, something about statistical significance, um, in, in some kind of study. And it was funny he said that because then I thought about it later and I was like, okay, most people don't have enough raw data. What did he mean by that? Cause this is a really smart guy. So I always have to ask myself like, what did he mean? Um, so I think what he meant is most people just don't have enough knowledge. And it's the same thing that I'm saying here. Most people just don't have enough knowledge in their brain, raw data. You don't have enough raw data. Okay. Okay, so actually, I'm going to stop the episode here. 45 minutes, we answered a couple questions, long rant at the end. I'm going to stop the episode here because this is the most important thing I could have said this episode by far. Whatever other questions I answered, I'll answer them on, I, I didn't answer, I'll answer them on the next episode. This is the most important message, so I'm ending here. Now, a couple of things, action items. I need you guys to be reading more. Increase the level of knowledge. It doesn't have to be books. You don't have to buy books. If you're broke, you don't have to buy books. Go on YouTube. Good sources of information, not just on programming. The raw data in your brain to look at a problem. How can just learning about programming help increase the raw data in your brain to look at a problem? That's not going to increase it at all. That's only going to increase it if the problem is in code. You have problems with your career. That's why you're listening to this podcast. You have problems with, so, with soft skills, with communication, with accelerating your career. You have all those problems. You need to be reading books on sales, marketing, business, leadership, persuasion, um, biographies, like, or going on YouTube, okay? Looking up um, career acceleration, career coaching, like what do career coaches say? What do they even do? Why do they do what they do? Like marketing videos, um, you know, all this type of stuff. Okay. You need to be looking at your career in more of a broad way, not so focused on code. If you trust me, this is why you're writing me questions about like, what should I do freelancing wise? It's because you're focused too much on code. Focus a little bit less on code. Focus a lot more on breadth not necessarily depth, but breadth of knowledge acquisition. And again, we call this the edge effect. There's a great uh, Wikipedia about this called the edge effect, if you just Google that. They actually have this in biology, uh, and I've talked about this on the podcast, all of the life is at the edge of the forest, or the most dense population of animals is at the edge of the forest, stream, and field. The center of the forest is not the most populated area. The center of a pond is the least populated area, okay? It's the, it's the edges, okay? And for you, it's the same in your career, in your life, in your brain. Your brain, the reason you're gonna be able to look at problems in different angles is because the edge effect in your brain with your own biology in your brain. The biology that we see external is the same thing that happens internal. Get all these books, watch a bunch of YouTube videos on all these topics that you don't normally watch and read about. Finances, money, accounting, career stuff, leadership, business. It's going to create an edge effect in your brain and your brain's going to have neural connections that have never been sparked before. I'm not a neural scientist, but I can tell you that because that's the basic fundamentals of how the brain works based on the books that I've read. So you're literally 
creating new connections in your brain. Your brain is going to be able to explore problems in your life in a completely revolutionized way. Okay? Why do I always talk about mindset? Why do I say mindset so important? Because if you have the mindset fixed, you have those neural connections that I'm describing, then you can solve your own problems. You can answer your own questions. You can have your own successes. You can lead your own life. Okay? All you need is the mindset. And what that means is you need the neural connections. Boom, boom. All the neural connections connecting together. You need that. How do you get it? Books, videos, courses, YouTube. Read and learn nonstop in a diverse amount of areas that you normally don't read in. You don't have to read like new age books. That's not what I'm talking about. The fundamentals, psychology, biology, science, physics, business, career, leadership, marketing, like all the basics, the fundamentals, okay? Those will create the maximum edge effect in your own brain. So action items for you. Next week, experiment, okay? Experiment with what I'm talking about. Pull up YouTube videos once a day in three different areas per day or one different area each day. So the first day you do YouTube videos on psychology, second day YouTube videos on marketing, third day on business and career, or all three in one day and you mix it up. But my point to you is I want you to experiment with the edge effect. You could do it with books. You could buy books or Google books or whatever. Or you could not spend any money and use YouTube or Udemy or courses. But make sure it's on stuff that you normally don't watch, not code. Okay? There's a time and a place. You're asking me, you're listening to this podcast because something, something you want, blah, 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 career. All I know is at the end of the sentence that of like what you want is the word career, something related to your career. That's why you're listening to this podcast. I don't need to know what is what actually the words are in that sentence. All I need to know is the last word is career. And by knowing that, I know that you need to stop looking at so much code and you need to increase the amount of other sources of knowledge. So again, experiment for this week. You're going to read, YouTube, watch, listen, you know, whatever source of knowledge it is for you, that's fine. Just make sure it's a breadth of different topics. And then in a couple of weeks, just do that for two weeks or a week. You can set a time on it. Um, and then at the end of two weeks, the experiment's over and you just say to yourself, okay, do I feel better or worse? That's it. You know, this is the experimentation lifestyle. Do something, have a conclusion and ask yourself, like the scientific method suggests, ask yourself, Was this successful? For you, you can just say, okay, now let me sit down with some of my problems. Do I have any new angles? Do I have any new innovations or thoughts on these problems? Same problems as before. Do I have any new solutions, any new angles to handle them? If the answer is yes, do more of it. If the answer is no, stop. Okay? Maybe my advice isn't going to work for everybody. If it doesn't work for you, stop. If it does work and you have new innovations, new ways to handle your problems, double down on it. Read more. Watch more, listen more, okay? This could be advice, this could be the best advice that you ever got that I know most of you are not gonna take action on. (laughs) It's the most basic of advice that is often the most powerful. And for anybody out there who's not currently doing the edge effect, and especially if you're not reading, um... Trust me, if I could inject reading into your brain for the past 100 days, your life would not look the same. I know for a fact. So start now. Man, start now. If I could have it all reversed, I would have started way earlier. You're listening to me tell you right now, start now. Start reading. Start learning. Edge effect. Edge effect. Always think that. Anyway, all right, I'll end it here. Talk to you guys soon.